Hello and welcome to another episode of Gymnasticsville. I'm your host, Midnight Robin, and I want to talk to everyone today. I've had a few days to to think about this. I know over the last few weeks, I've been very, very critical uh, on the gymnastics community about their involvement with USA Gymnastics. And I've even come out and say that everyone should stop supporting USA Gymnastics, stop going to the meets, and stop paying them your money. And in that time, I've had quite a few people in the industry be very critical about my comments. Um, Even Olympian Jonathan Horton, former teammate of mine in Oklahoma, thought that what I was doing wasn't a good idea and that I need to look out for the athletes. And I have, since then, my position hasn't changed. I still feel that way. But I do sympathize after after having a few days to think it over about how hard that would be for club owners and athletes. Me, myself, I'm not involved with this sport on that level. I don't own a gym. I'm not a coach currently. I don't have any athletes in the sport right now. So I understand that it could be easier said than done when I ask for people to stop supporting an organization that has enabled a horrible culture of abuse with youth in the sport. I understand that these club owners have a lot of money invested in their clubs and these athletes and the coaches. And to get these athletes and coaches to stop supporting USA Gymnastics right off the bat, is very challenging. And I understand this. And there is the economy of gymnastics that everyone has to understand. And I understand that these youth athletes have been working out very, very hard. And the coaches have been coaching their athletes to the best of their abilities to give them an opportunity to compete well this year and beyond to accomplish their goals in the sport. So I do sympathize for the good club owners and the good coaches and all the hard work working athletes out there. I understand that this is not an easy thing to do. I was once a gymnast, and I can only imagine mid-season a coach telling an athlete, okay, We're going to sit out the rest of the season. You know? I look at it as, you know, as a parent, you know, you have to do certain things to let your kids understand that this is bigger than what they're doing. This is bigger than sport. And you have to sit down to your child and explain to them, well, listen, I understand that this is tough, but this is what must be done. So, I do sympathize for all the club owners out there, but just understand that every single day, there are more and more articles coming up that is dragging that USAG, USA Gymnastics name, brand, and logo in the dirt, which is essentially any club that is part of USA Gymnastics is 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 lowering their value of their club as a club owner. So am I mad at anyone for to, you know for everyone that is still 
you know, invested into USA Gymnastics. There isn't another governing body out there right now. I understand that. And I can be radical in some of the things that I say here on this show. But just understand, it's coming from a position where I care deeply about everyone involved with the sport. Especially the good people, the people that have worked hard, that have done it the right way. And I have nothing but respect for everyone that is, that is doing it the right way in the sport. But I do have a question everyone asks. Okay? The organization, USA Gymnastics. Okay? Would anyone feel comfortable putting that USA Gymnastics flag outside your gym? I understand a lot of people have, you know, the membership flag of USA Gymnastics in your gym. But that's the one question I want to ask everyone. If everyone is so gung-ho about USA Gymnastics, would you put that USA Gymnastics flag outside your gym? That's the question I want to ask everyone before I lead into my next segment. Would you put the USA Gymnastics flag outside your gym for the world to see right now? And I'm just going to leave it at that. And I hope some of the people in the industry that are looking to start another governing body, I hope they continue to do so. Because maybe this year USA Gymnastics will last. But remember... This is out of our hands now. This is out of our hands. The major media has this now. They are doing what they're doing. Okay? The Texas authorities are now investigating the Texas Sports Ranch and how Larry Nassar was able to conduct medical practice without a license. Okay? The Senate, the government now, is going to start investigating Michigan State, the U.S. Olympic Committee, and USA Gymnastics. And a report just came out today that someone from USA Gymnastics did notify the USOC in 2015, and they did nothing about it. And the USOC claimed they knew nothing about this. So now they're caught in a lie. So... There's a lot of untruthful people right now trying to bury what's going on. This is out of our hands now. So just understand that that as much as people want to continue to let things go on as things are normal, this is out of our hands. So as a fan of the sport and as a fan of all the great coaches and athletes and parents out there, just know. That this is not going to end anytime soon. And it would behoove the community to be prepared when USA Gymnastics falls. It may not be this year. It may not be next year. But as all these civil lawsuits and all these investigations from the government. And as we get more information. They're going to be held liable. And we're going to need to have a backup plan. And tomorrow we have one of the matchups of the year. Oklahoma number 1 team in the country, Nebraska the number 2 team in the country, and Stanford the number 4 men's gymnastics team in the country. A tri meet going down on the campus of Oklahoma, Norman, Oklahoma. And I just want to say a few things about this matchup. Because when I saw this meet on the schedule at the beginning of the year, I was excited about this meet. You know, Oklahoma against Stanford, against Nebraska. But I'm not, I'm not going to lie to anybody. Nebraska has been the biggest surprise this year, hands down. And that's why this meet is interesting because... 
Yes, Nebraska did well last year. They qualified for the team finals for the first time in a while at NCAA championships. But I just did not expect them to catch their stride so early into the season. And they were ranked number one for the first few weeks of the season. Still ranked second. So this is this is exciting to have three of the top five teams in the country on the floor at the same time. And honestly, you really don't see this these these high level of teams on the same competition floor so early into the season. So this is a treat for all the NCAA fans out there. Because usually you have to wait until NCAAs to see the best teams out on the same floor. And and so if you ask me, well, well, why does this why does this mean so much? Well, as you know, gymnastics, there's judges and it's very subjective. So usually Sometimes you really don't see how other teams fare against other teams because you have to wait to NCAAs and you can't always count on the scoring because some judges score higher than others around the country. So you really don't really know. You have an idea, but you can't really tell until they're all on the same competition floor at the same time. So this is a treat. (coughs) It's going down Saturday, tomorrow. At 7 p.m. at the field house. So let's look at these matchups real quick because these teams are stacked. You know, they got talent on all six events. We're gonna start out with floor, and it's no surprise to me that Nebraska is ranked number one on floor. All right, their main power hitters on floor is Jake Bonney, who's ranked second right now for Nebraska. And Cal King, who's ranked third. Okay, so when I look at this matchup right now, Oklahoma is Oklahoma's ranked 11th and Stanford's ranked third. So I expect Nebraska to be consistent. They're very, very confident on floor. They have great tumblers. So when I look at floor for this matchup, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna guess or estimate that Nebraska is going to take home the title on floor as a team. And I think Oklahoma is probably going to finish third. I know floor, you know, they were so-so last weekend against Michigan. They got some claims to clean up, landings for them a little bit. But we'll see. But when I look at the matchup for floor, I'm going to give the knot to Nebraska. All right, now let's move on to the Pommel Horse. Pommel Horse. Nebraska is ranked second on Pommel Horse. OU is ranked 8th and Stanford 9th, okay? Now, when I look at the Pommel Horse, Nebraska has someone that's ranked top 4 in the country. Antonio Castro is ranked 4th. And then we have Yule Modar, you know, national champ, is 5th. Now, I feel that Yule's 5th place ranking is a little low considering he hit his Pommel Horse routine last week in Michigan and went 13-9. Definitely a low score for a world team member. Um, So I expect that score to go up significantly with him competing at home this weekend. So I'm still going to give the nod to Nebraska on Pommel Horse in this meet. So this is going to be one of those meets where Nebraska is going to jump out to 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 a nice little lead starting the meet because they start on very, very good events. Okay, so I'm going to give the nod again to Nebraska. For the Pommel Horse title as a team. All right. Now we're going to go over to rings. Now this is where the home team starts to make up some some space. Okay. OU is ranked first on rings. Nebraska is ranked fifth. And Stanford is ranked sixth. Okay. Some powerhouse. Some powerhouse gymnasts they have. Yule right now is ranked second in the nation on rings. Boned his routine at Michigan. And we have Nebraska's Heath Anderson, who is ranked six. So I'm going to give the nod to the first place ranked team in the country on rings, which is Oklahoma. So Oklahoma is going to knock that off. Next up, we're going to go into vault. Vault, Nebraska is ranked first. Oklahoma is ranked second. And Stanford is ranked fifth. This is going to be probably 
this is going to be a nail biter event. It's really going to be tough to to decide who was going to bring home the team title on this event. <sighs> vault. They have Anton Stevenson, who was ranked first on vault. Okay, and Kyle King, who's ranked fifth on vault. So they got a first place and fifth ranked gymnast for Nebraska on vault. But then for vault for the Oklahoma squad. You have Matt Winsky, who did a really, really nice, clean two and a half, back two and a half, souk vault, boom. And then we have Hunter Justice, who does a powerhouse handspring double front. Matt Winsky is ranked second. Hunter Justice is ranked third. This is going to be a nail biter event. I'm going to have to say, I'm going to give the nod to Nebraska on vault. I think Nebraska. They have a few more meets under their belt. I think their land is going to be a little bit more clean. So I'm going to give the nod to Nebraska on vault. But I'm honestly, it's, it's going to be very close. I think it's only going to be a few tenths difference between the both teams on vault. Okay. Now let's round up to P bars. P bars. Oklahoma is ranked first. Stanford is ranked second. And Nebraska is ranked fourth. This is another event where. Just like rings, I think Oklahoma is going to have at least probably a point difference between the first and second place teams, uh, these teams on, on P-Bars. Right now, we have Yul Modar ranked first on rings. I mean, I'm sorry, on parallel bars, he's ranked first, okay? Then we have Daniel Leo from Nebraska is ranked third. And then rounding out the top 10 for OU is Levi Anderson, who is ranked fifth and Jinka Suzuki is ranked 6 for Oklahoma. Yeah. Psh, OU has psh, three gymnasts in the top 10. So, with those type, type of numbers, with that type of consistency and difficulty in their lineup, I think Oklahoma is going to take the P-Bar title this weekend. And let's get on to the last event, High Bar. The most exciting high-flying event in men's gymnastics. And we got Oklahoma ranked first, Stanford ranked third, and Nebraska ranked eighth. This is going to be a treat event for everyone. I think, believe it or not, I think Stanford is going to take this title uh, on high bar because I feel like they got last year's national champion, Robert Neff, who is ranked first right now on high bar. And for Oklahoma, they have Jinkai Suzuki. He's ranked second on high bar. And Levi Anderson from Oklahoma as well is ranked fifth. So when I look at this matchup for the teams, I just feel like Stanford has a lot of consistency, a lot of difficulty. And they have last year's high bar champion Robert Neff in the lineup. So I think this is the one event where Stanford is going to win uh, the team for high bar for sure. So now since we kind of rounded up all the events, I feel, well, the big question is, will Oklahoma leave the competition? Right now they're 82-0. If they win this meet, they jump to 84 straight wins. Remarkable that we are witnessing greatness with this streak. If they come home and win this battle with the nation's best teams, they will be 84-0 and only four wins away from the UCLA legendary team coached by John Wooden. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was on those teams. Walton was on those teams. Wow, there was some... Really good players and coaches, and it's it's crazy that the Oklahoma men's gymnastics team is going to be in this conversation. So, it's going to be a very, very exciting meet. So, my prediction is Oklahoma keeps the streak alive. I feel this is their first home meet. They're going to be pumped. We have the Oklahoma City Thunder mascot Rumble is going to be in the house, getting the crowd up off their feet, getting them loud. So I feel Oklahoma is going to take this one. Final score prediction, 413.6 for OU. 
I have Nebraska going second with a 412.9 and Stanford third with a 411.5. But this is going to be a great meet. It's going to be Saturday, tomorrow at 7 p.m. Make sure you tune in. Go to Soonersports.com for more information on how to watch this amazing competition. But yeah, y'all in for a treat this weekend. Oklahoma should knock this one out, but it's going to be close to the end. Moving on, we have a huge, huge matchup this weekend. Oklahoma women's gymnastics team, the best team in the country right now, even after a nail-biting loss last week against Florida. And they're up against number four, UCLA, which is ranked number four in the country. This is another powerhouse matchup, okay? UCLA has a few national championship titles. They're competitive every single year. And, you know, after seeing last year, last weekend's performance with Oklahoma and Florida, they performed well, like I said, and I feel the judges stole that one. So when when I'm looking at the matchup between these two teams, honestly, I don't know how it's going to go, okay? But let's look at the teams and how, and how they size up in terms of their events. Okay, let's move on to Vault. Vault right now, Oklahoma is ranked number one on Vault, okay? Some keys on Vault is that they have three gymnasts in the top ten. Maggie Nichols is ranked number one on vault. Then we have Brenna Dow is ranked number four. And AJ Jackson is ranked number 10. So when we look at the vault, I'm looking at Oklahoma to win the vaulting matchup with UCLA. Just by the mere fact they have three gymnasts in the top 10. So I think Oklahoma has a little bit more depthness when it comes to vault. Now, when we look at uneven bars, Oklahoma is ranked number one, UCLA ranked number four, okay? Oklahoma has two gymnasts in the top ten. Maggie Nichols ranked second, and Nicole Lieberman Lerriman, is ranked in the top ten. But let's not forget Olympian Kayla Ross is ranked third. So when I look at this matchup, this could go either way between UCLA or Oklahoma. Moving on to the balance beam, Oklahoma is ranked number one. UCLA is ranked number two. This is by far, I feel, the closest matchup, and it could really go either way. OU has Carly Woodard. She's ranked in the top 10, but then UCLA has Pang Pang Lee, who's ranked number one, and Kayla Ross, who's ranked number five. So, like I said earlier, I'm not really sure who's going to win this matchup. I think I may have to give the edge to UCLA. Like I said, they are ranked second, even though Oklahoma's ranked number one. So, I think... UCLA may edge out Oklahoma on balance beam by maybe a tenth or two. We'll see. And then when we move on to floor, I look at Oklahoma is is tied for second in the country, and UCLA is four, and Oklahoma has Maggie Nichols, who's in the top ten. So when I look up this floor matchup, I think I'm gonna give I'm then I'm gonna give it to Oklahoma, you know, to win uh, as a team on floor. And then looking at the all run right now, there's two powerhouses, which is great. This is going to be a really interesting matchup. I think Maggie Nichols, since this is such a big competition, she's probably going to be doing the all around. She seems healthy. Uh, Right now, Maggie Nichols is ranked number one in the all around. And then Olympian Kayla Ross is ranked third. Um, Like I said earlier, this all comes down to a few things. If, if it was one knock I have to give to Oklahoma from last weekend's loss to Florida is that they finished on beam 
and they left it open just a little bit because a few of their heavy hitters didn't stick their dismounts on beam. Okay, so the same situation is going to come up. Okay, the home team is going to finish on floor. Okay, big advantage for the home team because UCLA, man, they have some amazing choreography that gets the crowd standing up. I can't remember how many times last year that some of the choreography of the UCLA women actually made Sports Center because they had such great choreography and it got everyone moving. So you're definitely going to have the crowd standing up on their feet, enjoying the choreography and the performance of the UCLA women on floor. And then OU is going to finish up on beam because they're the visiting team. So the key point to this is that if Oklahoma wants to steal a victory in California at UCLA's home turf, they're going to have to stick their dismounts on beam. I look at this matchup as being very close from start to finish. Oklahoma's one win. They're going to have to stick their dismounts. And what UCLA is going to have to do is they're really going to have the key in on vault. Because when I'm looking at all the scores that they're ranging here with this matchup, by far the one event that Oklahoma could have the biggest gap is on vault. So UCLA, I'm looking for them to really hone in on their landings a little bit better. I think they have the difficulty to stay with Oklahoma. But the one thing Oklahoma does really well on vault is that they stick. They don't move. So if UCLA wants to win this competition, do the upset against the number one team, they're going to have to stick their vaults for sure. And they're going to have to finish strong. So... This is going to be really too tough to really tell, but in my opinion, I know last week I was wrong. I, I went for Oklahoma to win that matchup, you know, going up against the number five team in Florida, and they were just a little short, but I feel that Oklahoma is going to bring it. They're going to be a little bit hungry, and they're definitely going to finish a little bit better with their dismounts on beam. Because of that loss they had last year. So I'm going to give it to Oklahoma again. But it's going to be very competitive. I'm going to say Oklahoma is going to win. With a 198.1. To UCLA's 197.7. Final score. But definitely tune in this weekend. It's going to be a bomb burner. All right, Gymnasticsville. Next up. I'm going to read a writing from the assistant coach for the University of Oklahoma men's gymnastics team, Taki Abdullah Simmons. And the reason why I'm going to read this to everyone is because there's so many articles coming out right now on the media about USA Gymnastics and about, you know, the lack of... The lack of people within the organization coming forward when everything is going down with the coaches and not doing the right thing with these young gymnasts. It's always good to read pieces and stories and writings from men in the community. And I say men because a lot of the women have been very vocal over the last few months, even some years in Dominic Musiano's case, because she's been talking about the abuse going on with gymnastics for a very, very long time. And I feel a lot of the men are still very silent on everything going on, and there's so much bad press, so I, I need to... When there's a gymnast that comes forward or a coach that's in the industry and it's male, I need to let everyone know that not all the men in gymnastics do wrong. The majority of them are great coaches. The majority of them are great people. 
and they care about this sport and they care about the athletes in the sport. So I want to read this piece because I feel it's necessary to let everyone know just because there's a few bad apples in the industry, it doesn't, it's not everyone that's doing these wrongful things. So this writing is by Taki Abdullah Simmons, and the title of the piece is USA Gymnastics in America, Another Point of View. I am ready to join the conversation in a way that is more than just saying I support all the victims of Larry Nassar and what is now being considered the worst abuse scandal in American sports history. It goes without question for those that know me that I truly care about the happiness of others. What we offer to, of, to the success of others and the happiness we can spread by being our best selves to those that we encounter. So believe me when I say that I support all the women and children who were abused. Some of these women I know, and I just wanted to share my support and wish you continued strength and healing. I love gymnastics. I love what it has done for my life and what I've been able to experience because of my ability to flip. Gymnastics was a tool that I used to better my life and has been a driving factor of why I'm here today as a person. So let's get on to it. I know people in the community were upset about the Sports Illustrated article titled, American Gymnastics is no longer a sport. It's a conspiracy of pedophiles and their enablers. And every coward who enabled serial abuser Larry Nassar deserves to pay. In first reaction, I was like, ugh, you're wrong. But then I stopped and started to think. I generally try to understand the other side of situations so I can better understand why one would view something and so therefore I am not quick to judge. And after doing that, I don't think this is a far-fetched title. We have a serious problem in American gymnastics. In the headline says, no longer a sport. In the eyes of everyone outside the gymnastics community, before the abuse became international news, American gymnastics had been viewed as a super hard sport, one that the common person couldn't understand. And American women were amazing at. Women's gymnastics was a sport. It was a women's sport. And all the males out there know that if you grew up as a gymnast, at some point, you would get made fun of for it. So again, gymnastics in America was women's gymnastics. And now with the scandal, the outside community and the foreseeable future will now assume that most female gymnasts could have suffered abuse in some shape or form. I'm sure female gymnasts have been asked more than ever, did this stuff happen to you? And for that, I feel horrible for my sport. But that is what American gymnastics is known for presently. The outside community for the foreseeable future will associate gymnastics with abuse. So yes, we have lost our sport to abuse. But can we change the past? No. Everyone needs to be held accountable for the state in which the sport is in now. Everyone, including myself. I could no longer stay idle and not speak about the issues. To the women's gymnastics community, being at your club meets as a coach made me uncomfortable too many times. Not for me being a male, but for some of the situation I witnessed while coaching at meets. I obviously grew up doing men's gymnastics and that's all I knew until I started coaching women's club gymnastics shortly after leaving college. During my four seasons as a women's coach, I coach girls from levels 2 to level 10. And I have to say my overall experience of it was one that I did not love. I saw too many times girls being belittled, shunned, yelled at, and doing gymnastics that was far outside their gymnastics range or development. 
And obviously, this was not every coach or every club by any means. But it was too frequent to not think the sport had some serious cultural issues. The culture that stemmed from USA Gymnastics is heavily at fault for this is my honest opinion. A culture that cared for Olympic success more than all else is to blame for this. The culture was more concerned with the top-down approach instead of starting from the grassroots. A culture that thought that if they put all the attention to growing champions, it would bring people to the sport instead of helping grow the sport from the bottom up. The culture of USA Gymnastics rode on the back of teenage girls to fill their pockets, feel the success of winning without truly caring about these young women who were being mentally and physically abused in the process. They did not look out for these girls or athletes. It was the most selfish thing an organization could do. Children are our future and will always be. And to not have an ounce of care of the culture in which the winning was done is honestly unforgivable. Female athletes have to be strong, have to be some of the strongest women ever to endure what they had to do. I have nothing but respect for what they endure. Gymnastics is already hard as hell. And to deal with the mind games that coaches play and the pressure girls' parents place on their shoulders, it's amazing. Plus, most are outstanding students as well. Get it, girls. Shame on USA Gymnastics for snatching the identity of what the sport truly is. They have made it hard for female gymnasts to not be questioned about their time as a gymnast. And for that, shame on you. They stole what the public associates with gymnastics. And for that, I cannot forgive them. On the men's side, we struggle from the same top-down structure, but with a quarter of the women's success. I'm sure most of the men's side feel like we have been in purgatory with the lack of newness in any shape or fashion. I've seen a community that lacks true unity because the system leaves them feeling bitter about their time in the sport. A community that doesn't give back as much as one would hope. But I do not blame them. Our greatest gymnasts had to fight for the little that they got and left without feeling valued or respected. The entire men's community follows from afar. I know this because I was one of them. And as, I, and as I continually speak to those that only watch from afar, I have seen the great decline of NCAA programs and the great alumni with those programs. A community that wants to be close but has no direction. A community where the few voices that do speak are rarely received or respected and are quieted for going against the grain. A community that makes excuses for our failures without owning up to our own shortcomings. Own shortcomings. I witnessed a junior national championship competition last year that did not have an awards podium. Obviously, that seems small in terms of the current state of gymnastics, but really, imagine working all year for the biggest competition with the best in the nation, and the organization doesn't care to make it an enjoyable experience. We have strayed so far away from what really matters. It's a shame. We really need to start caring about the people participating in the sport and welcoming everyone to a healthy, fun, and safe environment for all. One that leaves participants with a positive memory so they want to stay with the sport, want to give back, and want to grow the sport. The time is now to take our sport back from those that used to do gymnastics for raises, for raises, bonuses, and credit. The sport needs to go back to the participants and the true lovers of the sport. Stop the win-at-all-cost mentality and understand that each person is a person who has feelings and will grow to be a person that influences another person. Do your part and be better for everyone. American gymnasts, we must be heard now. Now I am part of the discussion. And this was written by Taki Abdullah Simmons, Oklahoma men's gymnastics assistant coach. When you have a passion for acting, dancing, acrobatics.
it's rather saying you have to practice for the challenge you're bringing on yourself. Cause believe me, it's hard when your mind gives up. You gotta speak.